Hello everyone and welcome to our virtual field day. My name is Kyle Canella and I'm a PhD student at the University of Missouri working on soybean breeding and genetics. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about my master's research, which was on the resistance of soybean to southern root non-nematode. So nematodes after it infects the plant, it causes the formation of galls. So galls are these giant masses that you can actually see on the roots if you pull a plant like this picture on the right. And as you can expect, the more galls that you have, the more reduced the nutrient and water uptake will be. The infection of these nematodes in the plants cause what we call abiotic stress-like symptoms. So you can see everything from stunting, wilting, nutrient deficiency symptoms, because if you think about it, you're having less water and less nutrients, so the plants will respond. Because of that, we have severe yield loss. This is a very aggressive pathogen, and you can see yield loss is as much as 80 to 90%. And of course, it's likely one of the most damaging pathogens in the world. This picture here in the bottom was taken at our research field in Clarkton, Missouri, which is a heavily, heavily infected field with southern root non nematode. So the four row plots here on your left are tolerant lines. So they're completely free of symptoms. The four all the way to the right are also tolerant. So you don't have any symptoms. But look the ones in the middle. These are susceptible lines exposed to a high nematode concentration. And the symptoms are extremely visible. This will drastically impact yield by the end of the season. So with this research, we try to understand how well the resistant available now works. And to do that, we had to know what was the field concentration of nematodes. So we took soil samples from every single plot in this test for two years. So this was over 480 samples across those two years. And the way we did that was really taking eight samples per plot, four in each side, and then later we bulked all of this and sent to the lab. So we could have a very big representation of the sample of the nematode presence in the plot. This is how we looked after 2018 and 2019 data. So the lighter the color, the lighter the nematode pressure was, but the heavier, the, the darker the color, the more nematodes we have per plot. So each of these square represents one yield plot in the field. In terms of yield, and this is very, very interesting, is that we grew those lines in root knot free environments and root knot pressured environments. When you don't have nematode pressure, all of these lines are high yielding. You don't see significant difference between resistant, which are these purple bars, to the susceptible, which are these yellowish bars. None in 2018, none in 2019. They're all high yielding lines. When we grow those lines under nematode pressure, then we start seeing enormous differences. So in 2018, we saw about 20% of difference between resistant and susceptible lines under pressure. This is about 10 bushels an acre. In 2019, we saw a little over 20% of difference among resistant and susceptible lines. So, you know, seven to 10 bushels of difference just by carrying the resistance. But what is interesting is that you don't have any yield drag when you have the resistance. So this is a really win-win scenario. There are no reasons not to grow a resistant variety. In terms of how well each line can respond to the nematode pressure, I don't want to bore you with all of these numbers, but what, what is really interesting from this research is that we saw the susceptible lines on average lost six times more than the resistant lines when they had pressure. So think about a concentration of 5,000 juveniles per 100 centimeters of soil. This is a average to high concentration of nematode. 
if you're growing a susceptible line in these conditions, you would see on average 36% of losses. But if you had the resistance, you would only see 6%. Again, just by having this resistance, which you don't really pay for that, it's a win-win situation, you could save yield and secure your production. This is a plot where we, on your y-axis you have yield, and then on your x-axis you have the nematode concentration. This is the plot for the resistance lines. And really what is incredible about this is that the trend of resistance lines is a flat line. So even though you have higher nematode pressure, you, the resistance lines are supposed to maintain their performance no matter what is the concentration. When you look at the susceptible plot, it's a very clear negative trend, which means that the more your nematode pressure, the higher your U loss will be. Another thing that we did from this study was to further explore the genetic available. So we tried to map and identify new regions of the soybean genome that could contribute to resistance. So a little bit of background, most of the resistance comes from chromosome 10. Everything that is available commercially comes from chromosome 10. We were able to identify new significant QTLs, so regions of the genome in chromosomes 13, 14, 19, and some in 8. So the next step of this research and what we're doing right now is combining all of this additional possible resistance and seeing if, you know, if you have those plus the major in chromosome 10, if this will result in higher resistance. So this is pretty much what I had from our research on nematodes. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. You have my email, my phone, or my LinkedIn account. I'll be more than happy to talk to you and answer any questions you have. Thank you very much.